Hello everyone, my name is Titi Yasi-san. I'm a member of the Computational Object Group, University of Tsukuba. So today, I will present the topic Deep Convolution Neural Network with Estimator of Optical Cohesion Tomography Image for the scattered Density Estimation. Let me start from a little background on tissue density and OCT. OCT bed attenuation coefficient imaging is useful for tissue evaluation because AC is the indicator of the tissue density. However, AC is not only sensitive to the tissue density but also absorption. So, a method purely sensitive to tissue density is better. However, resolving individual scattered by OCT is hard because speckle appear in the image. However, the speckle might proceed sufficient information to estimate the scattered density from its local pattern. Here, in this project, we estimate a method to estimate the scattered density by analyzing the local pattern of OCT. By the way, retrieving the scattered density from the OCT speckle pattern is hard. However, the opposite process, namely determining the OCT speckle pattern from the scattered density is simple. The tissue structure is determined by the scattered density and the OCT speckle pattern is determined by the tissue structure. We denote this process as the forward process. This is almost deterministic and simple. The backward process is to estimate the scattered density from the OCT speckle pattern. Also, this process is what we want to do. It is complicated and hard. Here in this project, we solve this issue by exposing the estimatic CC between the forward and backward process and by using a convolution neural network, CNN. Let me talk about detail of our scattered density estimation. By using a semantic CD, we build a scattered density estimation framework, which consists of two parts. The first part is a simple and fast 3D OCT speckle pattern generator that converts the scattered density to OCT speckle images. This is a forward process. The second part is a CNN-based scattered density estimator with estimated scattered density from the OCT speckle pattern. This is the backward process. Although the training of the CNN requires a huge training dataset, it is generated numerically by the OCT speckle pattern generator with a very small computational cost. The dataset consists of OCT images and gratuitous parameter. For the training dataset, we generate a 50,000 OCT speckle pattern. For each speckle pattern, the scattered density, probing power, the actual and true lateral resolution, the signal to noise ratio were randomly selected and therefore assumed to be independent to each other. The random selection range of the scattered density is from 0 to 0 0.497 scattered per cubic pixel. It's what 0 to 50 decibel for the signal to noise ratio and the 3 to 20 pixel for the lead solution. Each OCT speckle pattern consists of 32 times 32 pixels. Here, the size of the pixel is interpreted as around 1 to a few micron, depending on the OCT device and its scanning protocol. Let me explain our CNN architecture. It consists of the feature traction layers and the estimation layers. The former consists of a stack of convolution operation followed by the rectification and the pooling layers of MAC pooling. On the other hand, the layer consists of two fully connected layers and an output layer. The CNN is trained to estimate the scattered density from the 2D cross-sectional speckle pattern. This training is performed with a numerically generating training dataset. Since the intensity and the signal to noise ratio will land and select. The CNN might use the spatial pattern of the speckle, not the signal intensity, to estimate the scattered density. Our training process was performed with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 GPU, and each training epoch took around 4 minutes. The learning rate was set to 0.001, and the mean square root error was used at the lot function of the training. The learning that was done with a 37 epoch, it took around two and a half hours. Let me show some results of our estimator and do the discussion. We evaluated the performance of the CNN estimator using a numerically generated 500 OCT speckle images 
fit but not include in the training dataset. The performance of the estimation was quantified by the root mean estimation error and is what 0.15 scatter per cubic pixel. In our result, when the set value was less than 0.35, the estimation was unbiased. On the other hand, the set value was more than 0.35, the CNN seemed to slightly underestimate the scatter density. However, the estimation is still reasonable. We also apply our estimator to a biological sample. The sample is a human breed spheroid made from MCF7 celluloid. The cell was cultured for 15 days, and the spheroid with a size of 250 micron was formed. The spheroid was extracted from the culturing environment and put in the room temperature culture medium without CO2 supply. We perform OCT measurement every 2 hours up to 28 hours. The OCT devices in this web source OCT with a measurement speed of 50,000 ALI per second. The probe wavelength is 1.3 micrometer and the lateral and the actual resolution are 19 and 14 micron in tissue. It should be noted that the sphere oil was not under the culturing environment for the 28 hours of the OCT measurement. Hence, the tumor spheroid might be gradually drying because of the lack of the nutrients. Here, we show the OCT images at the representative 8 time point. Although the spheroid might be gradually degraded, no sufficient alteration was found in the OCT. We then compute the scattered density images by using the CNN based estimator. It is images. It is what found that the scattered density was high at the integer time point, but quickly became low after 4 hours. For Leveron, we also compute the tissue dynamic images from the same dataset. It was computed by the method represented by LSATIC, and it is sensitive to the intercellular motion. Here, the high modality region is appear as green, while static region is in red. These dynamic images show that the intercellular motion at the sphere of periphery was high at the early time point, but became low at the late time point. It indicated some necrotic chain were occur in the sphere during this long time course measurement. By considering it, we can say that the scattered density decreased as the tissue is dying, and this reduction of the scattered density would be accounted by the destruction of the cell organelles. The time called alteration of the signals can be more easily understood by plotting it along time. At the spheroid periphery, the dynamic signal gradually decreased over 28 hours. On the other hand, it's what constantly low at the spheroid center. It is because the neutron were not supplied to the center, and hence it is worth a necrotic event at the earliest time point. The scattered density shows similar time cards both at the center and the periphery. It quickly decreased at the first few hours and it became later stable afterwards. Before closing my talk, let me remark some open issue. In the current implementation, the depth led solution of the swap source OCT was slightly smaller than the led solution range of the training dataset. Similarly, the estimated scatterer of the spheroid was found to be larger than that of the training dataset. And hence, the current estimator was not optimal for the spheroid study. It might result in lower estimated accuracy. However, it can be easily improved by generating a customized training dataset for this study. And the generation of the training dataset is fully numerical and quick. Let me conclude my talk. In this talk, we demonstrated a CNN-based scatter density estimator. This estimator analyzed the spatial pattern of OCT speckle and estimated scatter density. This CNN-based estimator was trained by fully numerically generated OCT signal. So we don't need any experimental dataset to train the estimator. A numerical validation showed that the estimator has satisfactory performance. In addition, the estimator was applied to the experimental obtained OCT images of a tumor spheroid, and is what relieved the scattered density decrease by the cell death. Here, I would like to thank my colleague in computation of the group and also funding body. Thank you for your attention.